Well, definitely a sprint car driver from the Golden State to keep an eye out is a gentleman from Livermore, California in the number 61. It's Travis Labot. Travis talks about his start in racing along with piloting outlaw cage carts in the wintertime to keep his skills sharp and Ocean Speedway as well as his big plans that he has for 2024. That's coming up next on the Dave's Home Supply, getting up to speed after these messages. Dave's Home Supply specializes in cabinets, flooring, and countertops. Visit their website at daveshomesupply.com to look at products, services, financing, and even a free estimate. Are you looking for bookkeeping, payroll, or income tax services? Then check out the folks at For You Simple Bookkeeping. They are a licensed tax preparer throughout the entire United States. For more information, click on the link in the description. Joining us on Dave's Home Supply, getting up to speed, representing Livermore, California, drives the number 61360, Travis Labot. Travis, welcome. Great to great to have you on here, and I'm really looking forward to talking in some sprint car racing with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, uh, let's just break it down. 2023, majority of the year was spent at Ocean Speedway in Watsonville. 13 feature starts this year, four top tens, a top five result. Ended up being a fifth place finish on July 28th. In the end of the year, ninth in points at the at the facility. How would you say that your guys' season went overall? Um, you know, it went, went pretty good. Uh, we were um, kind of getting this year just uh, – started off we got a new new frame so we we kind of knew it was going to be a learning year more or less and um kind of got halfway through and uh changed up our shock package and stuff so then we really knew it was kind of just going to be um, a learning year so we did spend most of our time at ocean uh kind of just learning things critiquing things and things like that and um yeah just uh you know overall a good, good year um good experiences and uh definitely found a lot of confidence and some good speed there well and you died you guys did get away from ocean um, at least making one feature finished 14th with the sprint car challenge tour at petaluma speedway and that had to feel good to go to go a make a scct show that's that's a feat in itself and then b going to petaluma which can be a little bit of a tricky racetrack for some drivers but able to you know, a 14th place finish isn't anything too discouraging. No. Yeah, it was, um, it was a, it was a good, good experience there. We, uh, we went, I think the past two years to, uh, to that race, just, to, um, you know, it's, it's a historic racetrack. So I knew I, uh, you know, hear about tracks closing down all the time and I just hate to hear about it. And so I knew I had to get as many laps there as I could just, uh, you know, it's just legendary. So, um, yeah, I went there this year and, um, you know, we had real good speed right out the gate. Um, I think we qualified about third in our group and ran second in our heat. And, um, we had, uh, yeah, that track's real interesting with, with the tide, you know, and it comes back in. So we might have tightened ourselves up a little too much there for the main and, but really a really great experience just running that Adobe. It's just real hooked up. And, um, you know, we had, a uh, Ryan Riley come on as our crew chief uh, about halfway through the year and um that ocean clicked off a, a few uh, first quick time in the sprint car and and you know got us up there early or early night speed and he's got a lot of laps um, as a crew chief at petaluma so he got me real comfortable pretty quick so um excited for next time going there for sure well, and uh, also something to note, too. I know that you didn't get the result that you wanted, but made the feature for the Johnny Key Classic, uh, which was also an SCCT race. That is a very historic event um, and a prestigious event when it comes to 360 shows in um, in California. Yeah, that was, um, that was you know, really rewarding. We had a tough couple of weeks leading up to that. I uh, got upside down and had to... Uh, you know, get, get the car rebuilt and there's some late nights in the shop, but uh, making the main obviously is made it all worth it. Um, and I think, unfortunately, I think we got into, you know, something, I think we've been the front axle in that race. So yeah, not the, not the result we wanted, but definitely making the main rolling out for it. Um, rewarding at, at, at least. Well, and something I was going to note that maybe a lot of listeners may not know is you, uh, 
I mean, you, coming from, I guess you could categorize Livermore Central Valley. That's a historic micro sprint breeding ground. But for you, at least uh, some of the times that I see you is uh, cage carts. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was about three and a half years ago or so. I, um, you know, finally landed a good job in, in my personal life. And um, that's back when I was running micros out, out of Delta Speedway. And, you know, season came to an end. And, I was at the point where I said, well, I, I kind of want to keep racing. So, uh, kind of put all my pennies together and, uh, picked up an outlaw cart and, um, I went up to Red Bluff, tried, uh, tried my hand at it. And it's a, uh, it's a, it's a heck of a place. And I, I don't even know, it's hard to explain. It's, um, you know, 50 cars tonight, 16 spots in the A and it's not like anything else I've driven for sure. Jet fighters and in in, uh, in the kiddie pool, I think is, is something. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It is absolutely crazy. And as you said, it comes down to qualifying, comes down to your heat race, and then you, if you're able to survive in the main event, that is a battle in itself. Yep, yep. I I, I think I did about two full seasons there, and last year kind of hit and miss. And uh, luckily, going up there, I, I met some real good people and. Um, the Tadiello family and the, the Rawls family really helped me out, gave me a place to, to stay and leave my cart up there and uh, help me get setups down and, uh, you know, Carson Perkins and, and Tanner up there and give me pointers where I can. And, um, yeah, it's qualifying is, you know, it, it happens quick. And, man, between being fifth place and 20 seconds of hitting the wrong rock coming off a of four, I mean, it's so close. So, Yeah. Sure, and um, that's the first time you hit the racetrack. There's no hot laps. There's nothing really to go off of besides watching, you know, some of the box stocks, see how their cars are handling. But by the time, you know, the Opens go out and qualify, their track has changed. So it, it makes it it makes it a little tricky and very, very difficult. Yeah, that was um, kind of a surprise coming from the micros and always getting hot laps going up there. Uh, my first time actually ever more or less firing off an outlaw cart um, was going out for qualifying at Red Bluff. And I remember it because it was the one night that they did single car qualifying. I believe it was raining. And uh, I think it was right after the break. So that track was, you know, nice and nice and soft. And I'm pretty sure it was real banked up. So it was uh, all eyes on me for a single car qualifying first lap from outlaw cart. So that was uh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Yeah, where normally it's, you know, a pair or three cars at a time. So, yeah, makes it tricky. Yes. But, uh, and then the, the, the micro sprint deal, that's, that's kind of how you got your start into it. When, when would you say you made, you made the leap into being a driver? Um, well, I started, I started racing when I was five, back in, you know, running box stocks and whatnot. And, um, ran Delta for, for most of my racing career and, um, up till about four years ago or so. And, um, we kind of decided micros were getting pretty expensive for what, you know, for the competition level and stuff like that. And, um, we, we knew, you know, but driving a sprint car was always, always a dream. I never thought I'd sit in a sprint car, let alone drive a sprint car and you know, drive racing micros. It's, it's always been a family deal. Just me, dad, grandpa. And, um, so running micros and, uh, for about 14, 15 years there. And it was a uh, really good, really good learning. And uh, uh, it, it's fun. I mean, I, I love, love my time like this. And then uh, for, for the sprint cars, you know, making that decision, um, how did that kind of all about come about? You, you just got yourself in a position where, where you were able to, um, it was, it was economical for you and uh, it was, it was just time to move up. Yeah, more or less. Um, my grandpa was actually retiring. He, uh, he owned his own truck and was trucking for himself for many, many years. And, uh, he sold his truck and he was like, well, you know, I, I don't know what else to do. We, we have only been racing forever. And, um, you know, he, he, he really cares about our racing. So he wanted to do everything he knows he can do to put me in the best spot I can from future for racing and, and just know that, um, that he, he's kind of, he put me there and it made him happy. And so he, he sold his truck and, and used that money to get, to get us rolling and get us on the track. And, uh, and 
you know, I, I started my job, took his, took some overtime hours and, you know, uh, just did whatever he could and, and then kind of growing it to what it is now. Well, and I mentioned earlier, primarily racing at Ocean, but you guys did venture out a little bit. Uh, what I saw ran a little bit of Placerville, uh, went to Marysville too for the um, for the Hall race. Um, uh, I mean, didn't make the features unfortunately, but you have kind of ventured around to some different facilities. Yeah, yeah, we um, we, we kind of started out at Ocean. Um, it, it's close for all the family. It's nice and cool. Which is uh, which is a big thing. Um, so, with you know, with the whole family thing and and it being on Fridays, I work four tens, so it's nice and easy, and I still have the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we started venturing out a little bit, and you know, I, I really love Poxville. I did uh, I think a few starts there last year, and 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 that's some some decent speed. I, we made the mains and lots of good laps. Um, you know, Marysville is like. Uh, first track I ever ran in the sprint car. Uh, I, I never did any any test days or or hot laps or my first time ever cracking the throttle more than you know just a little bit. I went down the street was uh, hot laps at Marysville at the the Mill Memorial I think in 2019. So uh, almost the same with the outlaw car. Kind of just yeah. threw myself right in it and sure. either gonna sink or swim and um and l- luckily um years leading up to that i started going to the sprint car races and, and helping all my buddies and talking to people and, and so everybody had pointers for me and they it got me in a good direction which is a really great community for that well and for you guys as a race team is there anything in the future like like is 410 racing on the horizon for you guys at some point or is it running two nights a week like dedicating to two nights a week or following scct Anything like that in the near future? Or are you guys happy doing what you're doing right now? Um, no, we're, uh, we're we're definitely going to try to step up. Um, 410, if you know, if all the cards get played right, and um, you know, if we get some some good sponsors and whatnot, then hopefully one day that that'd be awesome. Um, but we are uh, going to run full time SECT next year. Um, we've kind of just been building up building up this way and. With Ryan, Ryan Riley coming on board, we kind of straightened up our program. We're you know, getting all the ducks in a row. And uh, my, my crew guy, Branson, he goes to uh, school in Alabama. So he's graduating this year. So we're going to have a full full team, full time. Um, so we, uh, I think we're going to go for SCCT full time next year um, and then kind of fill in when SCCT has breaks at, at the tracks. No doubt, and and I was going back to your point to to Ocean with the weather's cooler. I was there for Howard Kading Classic weekend. Saw you there actually, and chatted with yep. you. Um, I was staying in Gilroy, and my buddy was running in to get some mic cables at Best Buy. And you know, it's advertised going to be like seventy five degrees, all that stuff. I'm looking inside the truck, and it says it's like one o something one of something ugly and uh yeah. and uh and then i'm like there's no we're only like you know 10 miles from this place how how is it going to be 70 but like sure enough you go over like this you know little break in the coastal range and uh and then voila it's it, it okay it is 70 degrees this is nice this is uh this is desired weather yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that is the real nice part of the ocean. And coming from Livermore, same thing. Yeah, we'll you know get out of here around eleven o'clock, and some days it's already up to ninety five, and it's eleven o'clock. And I'm like, man, this is gonna be a miserable day here. I'm glad I'm going to you know ocean and get to cool off and something cooler. And but it's it's a uh, kind of all in that ocean sun. It'll it'll sneak up on you sometimes. It'll stay cool, but you get out there and stand it. It, it heats up for sure. Sure, sure, yeah, no, no doubt, and you know, I mean, the only other thing you got to be careful with uh, on Fridays is, you know, Bay Area traffic. It gets a little tricky in Livermore too, um, but uh, as long as you just time it right, should have no issues. Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah, we uh, are, are, you know, a couple of years we started going there. We we've definitely played with times to leave the house and and uh, and stop stop for fuel different places to try to get the timing right, and always seems like kind of middle end of the season the traffic just gets terrible and you know, it'll take us almost a little over two hours to get there when it should only take i don't know hour 40 minutes sure because okay so livermore that spits out what is that 580 
Altamont yeah. Pass? Okay. But do you guys drop yeah. down and take Pacheco Pass into Gilroy, or do you kind of go up, what would that be, 580 into, like, wherever that drops in and then go south of San Jose, Morgan Hill? Yeah, yeah we go Livermore to, I think we take 84 up and over uh, through Sonol and then drop in uh, by, uh, oh, what's that? I think, yeah, drop into San Jose and then just head down that way and dodge the potholes on the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, so the, the, the Friday, when I went down there Friday, we took the normal route, you know, the quote unquote normal route Saturday, we took a different road and that was, that was one windy beast, but, uh, it was, and it was at night and I could see that this, it could be problematic if you were towing a trailer, but it was, it was, from what I from what I remember, once I came kind of to of realizing like how sketchy the road was, it looked like it could be a pleasant drive when when it's uh, sunny and everything. Yeah, the, uh, the the mountain pass. I don't know the road name, but um, going out there before I got my car, I uh, was helping some friends, and I'm really glad I did that because I would have definitely just punched in my GPS and would have had to take the trailer through that the first time. So I'm glad I went there previous to racing, which I kind of like to do to tracks, uh, before I go there, just to kind of get the lay of the land. And also, you know, you never know driving in. Um, so there is that nice, a little bit longer, but go around the hill. Cause, uh, that windy hill definitely be interesting with the trailer. Yeah. What, let's see. 152. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So if, if you're listening and you're thinking about going there to race, probably don't want to take a trailer on that route so (laughs) yeah definitely definitely look at the route and uh, make sure you're going around the mountain yes yes most definitely um so number 61 is there a story behind that by chance or was that just some like a car that you bought and already had it on it um actually it boils down to it's it's just my birthday it's just june 1st um yep I, i ran number one forever in micros um my dad was number two when he raced, so I uh, just, uh, you know, went with one. So when we got the sprint car and like, you know, I, I kind of always really like the double digits numbers and um, I, I do, I design all my own cars and stuff like that. So double digit numbers kind of always, they fill up the wing boards a little bit better. Um, I figured buying a new car, switching classes, it's, it's the time to do it. And yeah. Nice. 61. Yeah, no, I, I, cause you know, 61 is kind of, kind of one of those numbers you don't see a lot. Like Joe Rowe, who was like the king of IRA, um, in the mid two thousands or so, um, he was 61. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, any other 61s I can think of. That was, that was actually my, I played football one year in middle school, seventh grade. I was defensive lineman and I don't, no one talked me out of it. I was probably like four foot. I don't know, four foot four and probably like 60 pounds, but (laughs) you know, (laughs) but uh, I could sneak through the, I could sneak through the offensive line and then I'd make contact with the running back or the quarterback every single time. But uh, as far as me, like throwing them down and shattering their dreams, that was a different story. So (laughs) yeah, the um, only other 61 I really know about would be uh, Howard, Kidding, I guess back in the day, he rode his bike over at Ocean one night and was telling me a story. He used to run a, um, a car with 61. And I guess back then, they would have circles around their number. It means they were from a certain part of the Bay or a certain part of California. And if they didn't have a circle, then they were from a different part. I guess uh, he always, I think he told me this story a few times uh, that he ran a 61 car for a little while. Yeah, so kind of like how dwarf cars do with sort of some, I mean, those guys use the letters or whatever to designate what club they belong to or their their um, their primary club. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, that's the way it's supposed to go anyway. So, so oh, every now and then you'll see just like a straight four or something where like, like double D is Delta, N is uh, like Northern California, R is Redwoods, and then S is South Bay. So those would be those would be like the ocean guys and stuff. So huh. that, like huh. I said, that's huh. that's the that's that's uh, the preferred method. Huh. So, right. But uh, well, that's cool. Um, and uh, you said SEC ten uh, next year. Um, and be, beyond that, like any trips uh, for like uh, Speed Week Northwest or Skagit Summer Nationals or anything that on like that on the radar for you guys. Maybe not next year, but in a couple years down the road. 
Uh, def- definitely, hopefully, you know, down the road for sure. Um, start start branching out a little farther and a little farther each time as um, we kind of get everything dialed in. And yep, uh, SEC chief full time next year. Um, and then so we, we just parked the car for this year just now and after Petaluma um, with it being a one piece and you know it's going to be a, a big switch for us gearing up to do a series. So we figured might as well give us a self good amount of time and. Uh, I'm going to dust off the old outlaw card here and go uh, stay sharp up, up at Red Bluff, maybe a little Chowchilla, yeah. something like that. Yeah, October 28th, that's opening opening night. Red yep, Bluff yep. It's, it's, coming, it's coming fast. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, people that you'd like to thank, I know you mentioned some of them, but any other individuals, and you're more than welcome to thank them again, uh, or any sponsors you want to send a shout-out to before we let you go. Yeah, uh, Barry Tile, Redwood Electric Group, Mosfos Powder Coating, um, SNS, um, and, uh, you know, and all the great crew I got, you know, my mom, dad, grandpa, uh, Branson, Ryan, Dan, uh, Biggie, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a group effort and, um, it's, uh, it makes it a lot easier when you got a, got a good, uh, good crew behind you and always hoping the best for you. Awesome. Well, that sounds wonderful. And it's, it's, it's Labatt. It looks like it's Labatt. You and I were talking about it and I always sort of associate that with Labatt blue. I don't drink, but I always thought, Hey, that's a cool name. And I like the, I like the, Lab- the Labatt, uh, the Labatt blue color, kind of like a Pepsi kind of like look. Yep. Yeah. I, man, I've heard, I've heard Labatt blue all the time. And, um, I still have yet to see it. Or try it, you know. I, I'm not a big drinker myself either. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I tend to go to the races or something on Friday night instead of going down to the bars or whatnot. But I still got to try it. You know, it's kind of got somewhat close to my last name on it. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Hey, maybe they might hook you up with a sponsorship too. So yeah, you know, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah, thinking outside the box. But um, oh, yeah. for for any sort of schedule updates or results or if you guys have apparel for sale. What is the, be- is there a website you guys have, or do you post anything on a social media account? Yeah, we got a, um, a Facebook Travis about racing. Um, went a little dormant this year as we're, you know, just learning and, and getting everything going, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to hit our hard next year, get the GoPros back on the car and get some good stuff out. Hopefully get some t-shirts made this, this off season. So, um, you know, so people can, can rep, rep the, rep the number. Awesome. Well, it's been great talking to you, Travis. I hope that uh, I hope that uh, Red Bluff treats you well and everything. Uh, there's no issues in in you know the pipeline with the Sprint Car Program, and you can get to do a lot of racing in 2024. Awesome. Yep. Appreciate it. Well, that is going to do it for this interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button on whatever platform you found this interview at. It really helps us grow the channel, and we greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, we'll be back with more content and interviews in the future. Be sure and have a great evening or a great rest of your day, whatever time you're listening.